the ball aloft. Richmond take on Collingwood. Ground is full. Beautiful night in Melbourne. Doesn't get any better than this. Grundy and Nan Curvis. What a battle that is going to be. Martin looking for the first touch. Little one out of the middle. The pies. High ball in the direction of Cox. His mum and dad are sitting at the other end of the ground. Green with that initial touch. Now Stevenson around the corner. High ball. Hoskin Elliott. Rises. Couldn't get it. Lambert just got rid of it. Grimes had to bail out with a kick. Out wide to Edwards. Good touch by Edwards. If he pleased with that, that was brilliant. Improvising to Rioli, to Koch and to Rioli. And then Rioli to full forward. Big, big, big mark taken by the Coleman medalist. From the back pocket to this. The importance of little touches. Hoskin Elliott nearly grabbed that one. Well crumbed by Kane Lambert. Then Edwards coaching clean with the hands. And beautiful play here. Great protection too from Josh Caddy there. To allow Jack Rewalt a good jump at the footy. Is it the first goal of the preliminary final? It's missing. Didn't kick one against Hawthorne. He's had a magnificent year. All Australian Coleman medalist. He would love to have got one early here. How to Langdon. Exciting though, Bruce, the way they built it up, the Tigers. As you say, from one end to the other. Maynard. Such a good job this year. Phillips and Grundy, the intended target. McIntosh did well. And that's the hardest thing against Richmond, actually getting the ball out of your defence. They set up so well. Once again, they get a boundary throw in early so they can lock that ball in. And from this position of the ground too, because they, if they quick kick it from here, Collingwood, it's just going straight back to Rance and Floston and these types of players. Grundy with the slight advantage there. Richmond in their forward arc. Here's the skipper. Penelope, such great awareness and composure. Taylor Adams, Cox has got to go, Rance there, meeting the ball strongly to Goey. Got knocked out of the way, Stevenson to Goey on the rebound, fast hands, Cox splits the pack there, he needs a bit of help, Rance able to tidy up, short around the corner, and a high ball that'll probably end up out of bounds, although Maynard did well to keep it alive. He did to Grundy, and then Grundy's handball, OK, and then Phillips with a probing kick, asked a lot of to Goey, but he got under the ball a bit, Grimes... Floston was back there with him to Asprey. Been under a bit of a cloud with the flu, Asprey. Kicks down the line. Rioli had to sit and wait. Maynard, who did the big job on Toby Green last week, sees the ball over the line. So no damage done, Revolt. Missed a shot from about 35 metres. The only score of the match. Maynard just being told to lay off hands. Richmond. Rioli. Holding on the arm, Richmond. And then Curvis free. By Sean Ryan right on the spot. Here's the thumping kick at short. Long ball, good ball. Caddy direction, not to his advantage though. And Greenwood was able to hold his ground and protect the marking zone. It was well done by Levi Greenwood. Goes down the line. Cox was important last week in this area, wasn't he? And then Nat Curvis back to short. And then on the left boot, Langdon, who took so many telling marks in the final term against the Giants. Careful kick. It's OK to Goldsack. What a story. Pumping the ball out long to Hoskin Elliott. Now, he can go wider if he wants to, and he does to Howe. And now they can build the pies. Howe from the wing needs to be precise with the kick. Goes the boundary. Majacek was going the other way. A little bit confused. The goey bowled over by Grimes, who's doing a good job early. And Collingwood have had a couple of early wins. Been able to take intercept marks in their backup. Normally, Rewalt and others bring that ball to ground. Collingwood able to mark it, therefore control the footy coming out of defence. Grundy, clear win, straight to Cochin. Pressed here. Kick on his non-preferred side. Bounce favours Caddy. Couldn't quite get it out the back door. Good tack by Crisp. Around to Langdon, Trelaw. Shifted hands to Maine. Side bottom involved. Missed Trelaw. The Tigers arrive in number. The pressure starts to mount. Pressed, he was gone. I don't think he made contact with the hand. And it'll be a free to the pies. And will be the recipient. Guys, lots of speculation during the week as to how limited Dustin Martin would be. He started in the middle, but an early push to pull forward. He went there at about the two and a half minute mark. And it looks days like Jeremy Howe is going to get him when he does go forward. And Levi Greenwood, whenever he pushes up on ball. 
So Pendlebury right on centre wing. He floats it to about 45 metres. Grundy made fairly good contact. Trelaw was sort of lurking. There is Greenwood. Stevenson and Short both attacked it hard. Vlosten just belted the ball out. Important one-on-ones here. Goldsack did well. Pendlebury been involved early. Had it taken away by Higgins to Edwards. This is where they're so dangerous. Perfectly way to kick all. Well, all not quite in the end. Kenny couldn't get the How cut it off. Phillips comes out and Collingwood are on here. Yeah, it was brave by Howe. Now Hoskin Elliott down the line to go if he can get it over the top. What a finger by Grimes, who's done incredibly well. What about Jeremy Howe off the back end, leaving his man, Wingy? So composed. Great attack on the footy by Trent Cochin. Luckily, didn't get him high. Don't want any in the body. Marks. Nothing wrong with that. Grundy little knock to his feet. Ball's been pinging from one end to the other. Graham with a wild kick into the middle. Crisp was tackled immediately. Here is Higgins trying to keep it rolling forward. Gold sack. Partial intercepted by Edwards. Had a bit of a fresh airy soccer. So did Lambert on that occasion. Look at the pressure. Collingwood are coming. It's coming from both ends. Little handball Edwards. How fast was that? Right foot banana Rioli. She it's on. Well, this is a preliminary final pressure from both teams at the moment. Not a lot of space to work in. They're absorbing a bit the pies, aren't they? They haven't had a shot on goal yet. Richmond have had a couple. Crisp out of the back half. Jim that curve is early points, I think, on Grundy. Kick inside, good to Cochin. Both the captains have started well. And then Cochin sets it up to about 25 metres. Big fly how at the back. Edwards and then Langdon and Revolt and a stoppage about 25 metres from goal. Cochin, Floston, Short, Nan Curvis all set up beautifully behind the footy. So Collingwood are going to have to run and use each other to get out of here. Good example of a game inside 50s level at five apiece. The Phillips kick partially smothered. Graham's come very, very high, kick to the square and Maynard. It will be a behind. Maynard asking why. So Richmond with the first three scores of the game. Maynard elects the north side of the ground. A ball met for Cox and it finds him. And that's a big confidence booster for Mason Cox. Saw it last week. Wayne Kerry talked about him pre-match, about how important he might be. Yeah, it's big because they get the ball out of their defence. He's 50. And as we know, and we've spoken about already, just so hard to do that against Richmond. Good pick up by Farco. He's been in five prelims before tonight. Thomas running hard. Lovely kick to the goalie. Now, what does he do here, the match winner? Does he palm it off or does he take responsibility and try and kick the opening goal of the match. He did the right thing. Hook in, hook oh. is a goal. He's kicked the first. Oh, it's a beautiful thing if you're a player supporter. Now that just shows you how important that marks from Cox is down the line. You take that one, Liggy, you get the ball up to the centre of the ground and then you move the ball quickly. If he doesn't mark that, Richmond keep it in there for... However long, they're just the best. Gee, that's a statement, isn't it, from this young man too? Yeah. He took responsibility in a big moment to settle his team. He did the right thing, he got back off the mark quick, looked to pass it off. As soon as nothing was on, he just said, I've got this covered. And how big was that mark from Cox down the line? That's yeah. where it started. It did indeed. Nan Curvis, good knockdown. Martin, Trelaw, great hands. Sire, out to centre-half forward. Pendlebury on all fours. Adams to Cox. Cox to Myatek. How good was that? Myatek along the ground. Just scorches the grass. Ever so close. Again, Cox involved. Adams clever. Cox, the tallest player ever to play this game. And Myatek, who's been a revelation. So Collingwood have settled pretty well here. One leader. Have a look at this. This is Daniel Rioli's wrist run chase. That's all he wants to deliver today. The bigger the game, the more simple you should keep it. 
Kicked four goals in the corresponding game last year, didn't he? A career high against the Giants. Pressed here. It's already been caught once. And then Graham, did he keep it in? I think it's a boundary throw in. So what are your first impressions, Duck? The, the, the pressure is immense, isn't it? And Richmond, Collingwood have been able to just control the air. So as I said, that marks down the line to Cox. A couple of intercept marks. So they've been able to bring the ball out of Richmond's uh, forward line. I've been impressed with the way Collingwood are executing the basics early on. Long way to go. Just under a couple of high-pressure moments. Pies have done okay. Grundy, Trelaw, Main. Good tackle, though. Over the top by Conker. Richmond love that ball on the ground in their forward line. That, that creates that. They can use their speed to put pressure on them. So if you control the air, you take that element away from them. If you look here at the moment, we might get a look at it if this goes over the line. Perhaps not now. Side bottom. Short ball, Cox. Now drives the ball long into the hole. Meyer check in front. Coming very, very deep was Dugowie. Hurley was on before he even knew it. Little La Lambert handball out in the direction of Edwards. He's under pursuit there by Sire. Grabbed and taken to the ground by uh, Prestia. Ball up centre half forward. Yeah, I think Wayne's point was really good about controlling there. 14 marks to four Collingwood's way, and they've been able to find targets a little bit better than Richmond. Nankervis, G. Prestia did well. He held up, and now he's in trouble. It's interesting, Duck, what you're saying. In this position here, Richmond can't have all their aces in one end, can they? They've got to split the difference. It's a Grundy front spot. Laid it down. Couldn't quite get to where he wanted to. Caddy able to get good meterage around that body. Gold second revolt. Now, Goldsack keeps the ball in front. Does well. We'll go back to Howe. Howe on the left foot. Side bottom marks. And then side bottom, beautifully way to kick. Enjoyed your article today, Wayne, about side bottom and how he's elevated himself. Sire. Superstar. There he is. Side bottom. Adams almost thought about going back to Sire. Wanted to unload. Didn't quite hit the handle the way he should have. Greg did well. In a tight situation, Conker. Now Langdon caught in the one-arm tackle. It was an absolute beauty. Not rewarded to Castagna. Now Greenwood with a left foot deep ball. Here comes Majacek. Got the front position there on Floston. Little handball to short. He wasn't quite ready for it. Picked up by Majacek again. Adams, they're going to unload here. Main to Varko. And Varko has marked. Those are those basic things there. Had every right to just blaze away, go along to the top of the square. But just lowered the eyes. Clean on the deck there by Majacek. Simple handball and a really clever kick inside to Trabarco. Just a couple of rush kicks from the Tigers. All of a sudden, this team that puts on such great pressure, they're now under a little bit. Trabarco, usually a good kick. This one's tight, but it's there. Magpies have got a couple. There's no better pressure than scoreboard pressure. And coming into this game, Lingy, I thought opportunities, if Collingwood can make the most of those, and what I mean by that is that kick right there. If you nail those kicks, 35 out directly in front, you go back, you nail them. And now pressure just starts to build a little bit on the Tigers. And it settles your teammates there, yeah. doesn't it? I think this is working. We're feeling something now. This is Margaret Court Arena, just a couple of hundred metres from the MCG. That's the Collingwood live seat. A couple of thousand fans in there. And that's as the goal was kicked from Barco. So just a few hundred metres away. Lots of support in there and plenty at the G. We've got 93,000 plus in the MCG at the moment. Phillips off the back. Collingwood have kicked the opening two goals. They lead it by 10. Langdon's gone and another Castagna tackle. The umpire pays the advantage. Conker finds Rewalt for his second set shot at goal. What a tackle that was. <laughs> Looked like he was through there, Langdon. Had a bit of momentum. Look at grabbing... That right arm, that is brilliantly executed, Jason Castagna. Well done. They've laid a couple of those and haven't been rewarded here, from the umpires, but Dusty just to have the understanding to take the advantage as well. A little bit inside left post here for Jack. Likes to turn it. A little left to right. That's too far to the left. Comes back, but... Or has it? Yes, it has. It's come back a couple of metres. late swinging ball that came off the instep and he'd be delighted 
Tigers get there first, 14 minutes in. And it's a typical Richmond goal. Pressure forward act, yeah, build off being creative, revolt finishing. Yeah, build off the back of pressure and then a bit of class from Dusty. Dusty. Telstra tracker, heat map on that man there shows. He started in the set of bounds, headed straight deep. Some questions during the week. But don't worry, Richmond fans, he's headed straight back into this centre bounce. So he's going to spend a fair bit of time forward. Also a fair wow. chunk on ball. So Grundy decides to go the big thumb. Well done there by Thomas. Sort of turned his man around. And then Trelaw and Thomas for the same ball. Grundy did brilliantly to Adams. And then Adams off a step. And Frost and Reed. So he's into set marks as well as anybody in the competition cuts it off. They are a great back six, these Tigers. Goes wide. And well protected by McIntosh. Kick career high in the qualifying final. Three goals against the Hawks. Beautiful night at the G. Look at that picture there. Magnificent McIntosh. Belts the ball towards Harford. Rewalk, beautiful body use on goal sack. He'll wheel and go, wants it in quick for the one-on-one. -on -one. It's Dusty. It's Dusty and Howe. Howe goes over the back with the spoil. Kick just a little high for him, but they've been wrapped with Jeremy's work there. Yeah, brilliant work by Jeremy Howe. Didn't get too conscious of his opponent there. Went the footy. As Daisy highlighted earlier, the first centre bounce, Dusty Martin started in it, went straight forward. Again at that centre bounce. Headed straight forward. Jeremy Howe took the match up. So Grundy here, what happens? He's allowed to knock it out in a rough contest, OK? He's, he's basically going uh, centre forward, uh, straight after the centre bounce. You, Have a look at this, Grundy. You can see there when Sean Griggs in there, you can see Grundy's just going to smash the ball forward. Got a monster it, isn't it? And there he is again and again, well, Wayne. Yep. Building that ball. Collingwood obviously up for that side, but they don't win it. Broad does, and then he keeps the ball in. And then Goldsack over the top. He can searching. Does he get a high tackle? No. Maynard did well in the end, and then Goldsack's wrapped up. And Richmond are getting it on the... So, Duck, what's the advantage? Well, if Collingwood are proactive, and they know exactly what he's going to do when Griggs in the ruck, then they can be on the move. And this is what the Tigers love to do with pressure. Press you to full forward. Phillips... Does he get it away? Did OK to Maynard. And then Maynard to Aish. And Aish with that control kick. It may be coming back. No, it's not. Chris did wonderfully well. Phillips, a little fakey back inside. Neat ball. Hoskin Elliott dropped the chest mark. Varco on the go. Gee, did well to keep that rolling forward. Under real pressure, the Magpies. Phillips has to go back again. Floston closing. Kick was had a lot of pressure on it. Bounce got both to Raw and Rance. Hooley to mop up. And now a little one from Broad. Cotchen. Tigers regain their composure. Good stuff from the Tigers. Here's McIntosh. A bounce on the northern wing. Long ball. Rewalt arriving late. Look at the Collingwood players. How went in hard. On that occasion did Taylor Adams. And Ace arrives with the ball to side bottom. Normally constructive. He has to think his way through. Side bottom then kicks to a dangerous spot. Varko underneath it, ball gets to Hoskin Elliott. Varko was lurking, couldn't get to it. And then Conker belts the ball out wide. His first prelim tonight. McIntosh played it well. Gets a second crack at it. He's tired, but he's over the top to Rance. Rance. Oh, slipping, slipping, slipping was Conker there. Rather land, but ball coming back. Adams. Now Adams, good kick. They've done it well. And Thomas short to Varko. He's going to get another crack at the goal. Well, he's played in five of these for the Cats, of course. Famously kicked three in the grand final against the Pies. Have a look at that on the brand new bit of turf that's right in front of the interchange area here. It's the only bit on the whole ground that's been replaced. So Goldsack gets it from Varco. Not sure why, to be honest. I mean, I reckon he was within range. Oh, absolutely in range. Kicked it 40 goals out directly in front. Earlier, yeah. yeah. Kicked Strange it. one. Yep, he kicked it from almost the same score. You would have been. Especially giving it to a defender. <laughs> Strange one. It's almost a crime. <laughs> so here's Asprey under some doubt with the flu in recent days. Floston's got the free in Martin. There'll be no and more speculation leading up to a game than Dustin Martin. And his injury or not. Caddy. 
Conker. Smothered by Langdon. Lambert. Langdon now, great handball to Howe. Howe backwards, Tigers surge. Prestia, brilliant job. Rioli. Mason Cox with the leg there. He had a little bit of speculation going on about his contract uh, <laughs> yeah, last he year, so he's, yeah. he's used to it. And is it all right, Duck, doesn't he? He does. Had a fair no, last no, no, season no. last year, didn't he? Drives it? on it. This time last year, he had one of Brownlow, a Premiership or Norm Smith, had he? So Pendlebury's kick out wide to go. He trapped it. Well, actually, he trapped it. Couldn't quite keep it in, but he just see the school there for Goey. What a great start this has been. I mean, Richmond bringing all their wares to the game and Collingwood up for it. And Collingwood composed oh, with their up. kicking, going at 74% kicking efficiency, which is really high for any game of footy, but certainly for a prelim oh, final with this sort of pressure. The first hurdle almost over both coaches. I think the thing you fear early, Duck, is being blown apart yeah. early in a game. Exactly. And it's happened to neither here. Stevenson on the wrong foot, Maynard. Put back inside. Good spin by Greenwood. Probably should have given it off. Goes himself for the high ball. Got to go here, McIntosh. He did. He was the meat and the sandwich. And then the head over the ball from Asprey. But he forgot to take it. He took the physical punishment, but not the ball. Handball to Chris. Chris on the run. There's Collingwood's third goal. Gee, they are coming with some Richmond-like pressure at the moment, the Pies. The captain was good at the very beginning of that contest. Yeah. He went in and then, of course, the creative side bottom and the terrific finish. Pendlebury's ability to create a contest was important. Got to take their chances. Yeah, yeah. That's what they did. Just little things, steel side bottom, just holds onto that ball for an extra half a second to draw the tackler. Gets crisp into space and duck. You've spoken about it all night. Take your chances. The other thing they're doing really well, guys, is they're winning it back at half back. Richmond can't get any deep entries. They're really rebounding quickly from half back, Collingwood. Stalemate between Cox and Nan Curvis. Picked up by Cochin. Quick kick. Rioli did well. Controlled it in the end against one of the opposition in Maynard. Play on. So Rioli with a careful high kick. Where's Revolt? He's underneath it. How flying so high. Higgins waited for it. Side bottom so involved. Maynard, that was very, very good to Maynard. To the goal kicker in Chris. And his kick is into a dangerous spot. Grimes built it away from Marching. Only as far as Sy. Sy spreads the love. Gets it to Talor. Talor running and then bringing the ball back. Not a great kick. Grimes doesn't quite complete the mark. Little gift to Hawley. And Basher does what he does so very well. Now the counter attacks on Bruce. Rioli. Beautiful ball here to Higgins. He all want to go as well and he does to Lambert. So the Tigers are on. Collingwood are getting back quickly to block up the gaps. Lambert. High footy, Rewalt muscling, cold sack. His third game back from a Rico. He did he's well still there. not even sure in his own mind, is he? No, he's, he started the game well, but just set up really well then, Collingwood, very quickly, because that was fast ball move by the time. Cox again. What about that? Oh, he huge. turned to Nanka and he said, I've got you in the air. Because what it does straight away, just Collingwood are no longer under pressure now. They're able to take it out of the danger zone. Cox to Grundy, flossed and absorbed, real punishment in the back. And it's worth the attempt by Grundy. Nathan Buckley asking what for. I can hardly remember in this quarter Rich, where Richmond have had repeat entries, which they normally get a lot of. I reckon Buckley thought that maybe Rance pushed Grundy under the footy there. And then the old sack flying out of that one. So the Collingwood fans not happy at all. Revolt short. That's the biggest thing. They, Richmond have only been able to get one entry. Collingwood are brilliant at half back at the moment, winning it back. And they've got more run coming out of defence. So Lambert's kick gets that into that forward 50. Caddy was a big, big flyer. Can they bounce it out here? Richmond hold it in. Sire, little, got a toe poke. I reckon, oh no, side bottom, got a toe poke. And it'll be a stoppage. 
Cox and Revolt, side bottom again, so good to Howe. Oh, Howe did well to get it away. Gee, they're playing well at the moment, the Pies. Grundy, magnificent. Farco, the outside runner in Thomas. He's a goal kicker. Couple of bounces, could have gone all the way. Centering ball, Majacek's got a bit of cup ball. What a double gander. Majacek with a double trouble grab. Thank you, just here. Asprey didn't quite get the fist in when he should have. And that run that we spoke about off half pat just able to do to Richmond, which other teams haven't been able to do. And that's a good mark, two on one. They'll be disappointed with that. Asprey. Trav Varko's experience and maturity in this first quarter has been important for the Pies. Meyer check. The kick of 25 metres. There it is. Collingwood have got their fourth goal. The worry on Damien Hardwick's face, the wonder. What do we do? Is this just a casual thing or is it permanent? What, what can I say to the boys? Well, the seeds of doubt have now been sown, BT. You're right. In his mind, the players' minds, they'll work their way through it. They're too good a team not to. I'm just starting to worry a little bit, though, Doug. Why not? Back. What a start, eh? What to start by their team. Here we go. So four goals to one in the last couple of minutes of a pulsating opening term. Nankervis went early. Grundy's had a great last ten minutes. Sire out of the centre. To go, he couldn't quite trap it. Stevenson so quick, he'll be dangerous. And Rance was with him. And that was smart by Stevenson. He knew he couldn't save it in, so he said, let's lock it in the forward line with a boundary throw in. Do the basic things well for longer than the opposition, and you're a chance in a cutthroat final. Down to the last minute and a half of the quarter. To Goey, left foot snap, another one. Collingwood here with five first quarter goals. To Goey has two of them, and the Richmond fans are now stunned. They are stunned what's happening here to their team. Red-hot favourites for this game. People are all of a sudden sitting there and wondering. Well, now it's real scoreboard pressure now for the Tigers. The Brodie Grundy-Mason Cox combo is starting to get on top. Great tap by Brodie Grundy. Mason Cox is taking marks down the line, relieving pressure. The Pies love it. Gee, this is now a very big start. It's a four-goal lead. Sire out of the centre. They might get another one. Thomas around the corner. Stevenson well placed. Pendlebury's lurking. I'm calling Pies because they're all over them. Lambert to Asprey. And then Asprey with a wonky, wonky kick. We haven't seen the Tigers like this in a year and a half. No, they're, they're rattled. There's no question about that, and it's because of that pressure, that scoreboard pressure is just building now. We're seeing players for the Tigers make mistakes that we haven't seen for so long. Well, in the 22 match leading streak, nobody at the MCG has led them by this much a quarter time. Cox the target. Phillips got it from Stevenson, kicks to full forward, and Vlossom takes a saving mark. Three goals in time on so far in this quarter for the Pies. Tigers need to settle. And that's an example of what Wayne Carey has just been talking about. Well, that's two kicks now that, that just put you under no real pressure. Other than that scoreboard pressure which we speak about, which is real, real pressure. Goodness gracious me. A 23-point Collingwood lead. Damien Hardwick, Hardwick looks furious. Cotcham right. with a free. Side bottom the infringer. 30 seconds in the quarter remaining. Creeping up to 95,000 here at the MCG. 
High ball. Caddy couldn't get hold of it. And here they go. Collingwood have got another opportunity. 19 seconds. Cox in front. Almost had it. Rance under real pressure. To go, he claiming the free. Not on. Graham. Kick's got to find someone out wide. A high ball. Up goes Caddy again. Off hands Martin. He was under immediate pressure. So was Rewald. Gee, the pressure from Collingwood. It's Richmond like. It is Richmond like here in the first quarter. This team, the Tigers, do it the best. But in this quarter, it has been the Magpies doing it the best. And they kick five first quarter goals as a result. It's a 23-point Collingwood lead at quarter time. 5-2 to 1-3. preliminary final that everybody has been talking about anticipating and what a match was seen. No, not a completely full house as part of the MCC. Probably about 500 seats here. We reckon around 95,000 at the moment. And over at Margaret Court Arena with a live site for the Magpies, they too are really enjoying it. Can you believe it a quarter time? Collingwood of five goals to Richmond one. Well, a big theme out of that first quarter and a dominant quarter from Collingwood. Richo, you mentioned it a number of times. Their ability to rebound effectively off half-back. Their ball use has been great, but it's it starting before that. Jeremy Howe a number of times has flown and the aggressiveness of his spoils to clear that area, what it does is deny the ability of those Richmond Smalls to get in and get dangerous. Yeah, it's never dropped short, Daisy. It's always cleared the area. That's allowed Collingwood to get some run off the back of that off half-back. Maynard, Phillips and side bottom are dominating on the outside and if you get pace on the game, they've had 112 disposals. They've been able to share it around and Richmond's defence has never been able to get settled off the back of it. Richo, Daisy, second quarter, Collingwood by 23. Amazing scenes here in the first. Perfect bounce there by umpire Brett Rosebury. Pendlebury, side bottom. Richo just spoke of him. Maya check. Adams, fast hands, Trelaw, gone, Grimes, and Cotchen together. No ball, no prior. Thanks, Heard guys. Brett say, Thank you. No prior opportunity there for Adam Trelaw. The two champs, Pendlebury and Sidebottom. Brilliant early, and so has Grundy. He's been wonderful. Main held up. Good tackle by Nan Gervis. He does it so well, doesn't he? Richmond. He's had his, he's had his colours lowered so far tonight, but we know one thing about him. He'll keep on going. Hooley's kick out wide. How Daisy talked about him. We've all been talking about him. The way he's read the ball and the courage that he's shown. His ability to bounce off half back. So have a look at the streak here. So they rarely have been challenged like we've... Well, they haven't been. They haven't been this far behind a quarter time in that long, long streak. So 23 points the margin here. It's an amazing record at this ground, isn't it? Cochin. Gee, that's a good start for the Tigers. Cochin to show that sort of desperation to try and inspire his team here. He shows that desperation week in, week out. He, he leads from the front in that area. Any structural changes, Duck, that you think are necessary for the Tigers here? For the Tigers? Well, they'll, they'll try to do what they've done all year, and that is try, they try to lock the ball in this part of the ground, but Collingwood have been so efficient at bringing it out. So, and they've oh, been so making the contests in this part of the ground, haven't they? Yes. Hard to defend. Here's the ball to Vagoey. Rance closing very, very quickly. Did a brilliant job. Soccer off the ground, straight into the waiting arms of Talor. Cox is the biggest man there. A couple jumps. He's marked not more than 30 metres in front of his mum and dad, sitting in the second tier, directly behind these goals. And he's now taken four marks. And a few of those contested, Liggy, and they're so important. And just sheer size there. Got him that mark. Should have got a, probably got a free kick as well for one behind the ear. This ball will almost land in the lap of his dad, Phil, and mum, Jay. In he comes from 30. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's a 29-point lead. Goodness. Gee, what a, a weapon. This man is becoming before our very eyes. It's just so important to the structure of this team. And, and he has been from the start of the year criticised for that first game of the year where the ball was slippery, drop marks, 
got suspended from that point on, Bruce. He's been very, very good. The big freeze, he was outstanding, wasn't he? Yep. So Deadfield, Mum Jay from Texas flew in today, basically. Everybody. And they're going to be staying maybe a little longer, who knows? But Mason Cox, go. who turned it on in the big freeze with his five goals, is having such an impact tonight. And so is his other Ruckman in Grundy. Well done there, Curvis, that time. And then toe poking forward. They need a goal, the Tigers. Langdon working hard in front. Held up. And a stoppage. And they even haven't coughed the ball up in that situation, Duck. Just let it spill out. Richmond want that perpetual state of chaos so they can tap it on, surge onto it. Just even locking it in there and creating a stoppage is important. Richmond with 16 tackles so far in the game. Varco. Brave. Gee, that's almost 50. You can't grab them after they've been paid the mark. I'm surprised it wasn't. Trevarko goes the wide ball. Here comes to Goey. McIntosh stood in the hole bravely as well. Little ball ricochet. Adams got it out. Here's Trelaw. Trelaw runs to the open goal and misses to the left. Collingwood in complete control of this second quarter. Sounds ridiculous. They can almost win the game in the next 15 minutes here. Well, you can just see the Tigers now. Just the, the little fumbles missing the odd target. The pressure just building and building. Revolt's come up the ground. Nan Curve is doing the roving. He dropped it. He's holding the ball. That's holding the ball. We're seeing a so much there, champion team unravelling before our very eyes, aren't we? And the, the run on the outside is just so noticeable here at ground level. They're just running all over the top of them, Collingwood. So Adam Cox again. Oh, he's getting better. Oh, he's, he's getting, getting bigger and better. He's staring at him, Bruce. Clear it out. Go. What has Collingwood unleashed here? We're seeing the future of the game, perhaps. It looks different, doesn't it? That's a, oh, what a great. Takes everything in at the highest point, and when you're that big and your arms are that long, it's a smart way to do it, but it's often hard to do. Impressive. Can he do it again? Can he do it again? You betcha. Well, if somebody told you 10 years ago that Mason Cox would be playing AFL with his background, you would have scratched your head. If you watched him train at that, that first training camp that they had, Bruce, I thought he had no chance. Well, we're all with you. Hey, Duck, we were wrong. We were absolutely wrong. What a highlight this has been. Contested marks, crucial to tonight's game to relieve the pressure, but then inside 50 to drive his team to a 36-point margin, and that one, the pick of them all. That is the best mark he has taken in his career. Make no mistake, Grundy, inspired by it, launches himself. Stephenson to Sire. They go inside 50 again on the head of Cox. Unbelievable this time. The ball punched away. Conker, a little bit of the fumbles there. Just not quite sure, and all of a sudden, this Richmond team looked just a little bit iffy. Yeah, they're, they're fumbling. Pressure, this is what it does, this is what scoreboard pressure does. Adams went to thread the needle and Hooley in the right spot. The fans are abuzz at the G. They know they need the next goal, they're frantic, and that's where the mistakes and the nerves and everything else come in. So Adams, working with his mate to law. Not quite, Grimes, Hooley. And then Hurley goes back, coughing it up. Just okay. Richmond supporter just told me that the last time they met in the premium final, the Tigers were seven goals behind just before half time, kicked a goal before half time, they're six behind and one. But I reckon they're clutching at straws right now. Yeah, but that was Royce Hart that came on as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't think Royce is here today. No. Uh, 36, although Dusty is. Side bottoms run down tackle from Constanya. He's third of the game. Maybe that can fire the Tigers. Broad slows it down on the wing. All of this quarter has been played in the in the uh, Magpies half. That's very close to the line. 
It'll go out of bounds, but it will give the Tigers one opportunity to lock it in. Well, it's now 27 inside 50s for Collingwood, 11 to Richmond. I just wonder what Damien Hayward could do from the box here now. They've been so in control in so many games, haven't they? We've loved what we've seen from them over the, this long stretch. And, and Richo's spoken about it, just Collingwood's ability to bring the ball out. They, they haven't had anyone that's done this to them. They've thrown Nick Floston forward as a move from the box just to perhaps be able to take a contested mark. They haven't got it forward. No, that's, that's a problem. That's a good point. Going to ground now, Curvis, side bottom. Run down a moment ago, but he has been magnificent. So is Grundy off a step. Cox again, worked underneath it, but he gets back. Gee, what a handful he is. Broad. Down the line, Conker, good hands. Hall is a left footer, and he does hug the boundary a bit. Castagna Martin, dusty his hands were good. Switching and turning, Caddy, running onto it, almost Lambert. Fending Castagna, he's gone. He's holding the footy. This is remarkable. Gee, Crisp has been sensational. The crowd is just buzzing here at the G. Meyer checked the intended target. He was tunneled there by Cotchen. And his feet taken from under him. Trent Hughes oh, no. straight away. He's got huge work rate though, Meyer checked to get to that position there. He has indeed, Richo. Here's Cox again. This time running flat out. Asprey was with him and able to spoil, and they find the safety in the sanctuary of the boundary line just for a moment here, the Tigers. It's been good, my check. I mean, he hasn't been the star of the night, but he was very important early when the pressure was on, and he continues to, with their structure, doesn't he? And if they're going to beat Richmond, no one needs to be the absolute star. Just every single player making every single moment count. Their tackling is, well, it's, it's Richmond-like. But they'll say they've brought this pressure all year, the Pies, won't they? They've backed themselves in with this sort of footy. Grundy tapping. Pendlebury gets a free kick. Surely. How good has this bloke been tonight again? Norm Smith medalist in the grand final, along with Bucks and Tony Shaw, the only three Collingwood players that have done that, all captains. Goes past Shorey tonight for games played as captain. Sets it up. Cox again. I cannot believe it. You've got to go back to Billy Graham at the MCG for an American to dominate like this. How smart by Pendlebury. He knew what you're talking about, Bruce, and straight away, bang. The crowd is chanting USA as well. Oh, well, has any American had a hat trick at the MCG? This is the stuff of legends. Can he guide it through? Yes, he can. Three of the very best. It's astonishing. It's one of the greatest stories, I reckon, in Australian football unfolding before our very eyes. It is remarkable. A 211 centimetre Texan has just torn the MCG apart in this quarter duck in a preliminary final. I reckon the audience is spiking in the United States right now. And the, and the contested type of mark too. Now look at this as we go in on Phil and Jay's parents. An American has trumped the opposition here. He has kicked all three goals in this second quarter. Unbelievable. He is writing his own story right here and right now. The Tigers under pressure like they've never been before. They're 42 down, and Jack needs to go back and kick his second goal. Jack has to kick this goal. It'll lift the team. It'll give them hope. Straight away, Jack was not going to pass that ball. He said, I'm going to take this upon myself. I want this kick. Yep, he's right on his distance too. Right on the floor of the 50, Mason. Well, let's have a look at this. Very close to the man on mark. Goes out wide, gets some leverage. It's coming back, it's coming back. It was a half a metre short. 
crisp tackled in the goal square. Richmond applying enormous pressure. The two Ruttman, Cox on the mark, yep. Grundy on the goal. Block. Perfect setup. Now Grundy can't tap this directly through. Somehow they're going to rush it though. Just sort of lays it down cleverly to Chris, to Greenwood, left footer, so that's okay. And Richmond get a stoppage. This would be the first time, just about in this game, that Richmond have had a stoppage down here that the defence can actually set up behind the play. Been remarkable by Collingwood. Oh my God. Collingwood by 42. Halfway through the second. Massive crowd, 95 odd in the house, despite the top of the MCC member stand missing a thousand or two. And another ball up. Jack. Brody, Jack and Brody. Richmond's attacking 50. Penderbury handballed straight into the face of Higgins. There's been a lot of that knock on footy by the Pies. Greenwood got met high by McIntosh, who slipped in his attempts to tackle. He's played in the premium before Greenwood for North Melbourne. This is something again. Broad searching for it and run down Prestia. Collingwood, a magnificent Pendlebury. Langdon. Majacek. Barco. They're on. They're on. He doesn't quite get it where he wants. Grimes, last man standing. Barco. Hoskin Elliott. Hoskin Elliott to go. He was lurking. Richmond completely and utterly on the ropes. Rants. They're great names, but they're not playing great footy. McIntosh. Caddy did well. Little give okay. Revolt goes back. Brig has to get down low. Cut off almost by Goldsack. Langdon. Langdon. What a win. What a team. Inspiring footy. Now Cox again in the air. This time it's thumped away to short. They just keep sending it back the pies. Richmond are doing all they can. They're throwing everything up at the moment. But Collingwood just keep winning the ball back. Who's going up? Okay. Absolutely incredible scenes here at the MCG. Friday night prelim final. Sire, Grigg, Pendleby been great so far. Adams has had the most possessions on the ground with 14. Side bottom with 13. This man Crisp, brilliant off half back as well. Wrong footed on his right, but how was that for some kick? Got the little ball into Hoskin Elliott. Maynard, long linking handball to Thomas. Thomas back to Maynard. Maynard was looking for Cox. It's stripped away. They've got him on the rebound, the Tigers. Good kick by McIntosh. Prestia uses the run of Higgins, and he spreads it beautifully to Boston. They've got to get two goals in the next few minutes. They've got to get two back, don't they? They do. No it's, question about that. It's going to need them to keep being brave. And Alex Rance was brave off half back there to leave his opponent. Cut that Good one off. That's a mark. Reckon they've got to get it back to five goals. Where you marked it? Blossom's kicked three in a game this year. He's got a good leg, but that one's not coming back. When you say get it back to five goals, Bruce, I, I think that's right, Darkenly, yeah. because. Teams are so good at playing shutdown footy and they can shut it down for a quarter, can't they? Oh, absolutely. And Collingwood, you, you, you want them to continue to be brave. They've got to continue to take this game on. Far too early to try to shut it up right no, now. No, I'm thinking if they're still yeah. this oh, far yeah. in front in the third quarter, yep. then it's probably easy to play shutdown footy for at least a quarter. And on the flip side, if they can get it back to that 30 points, they need away a little bit in the third quarter. Richmond will believe in their last quarters. They've done it all year. They come home so hard. and You think that man's always going to be a threat. Super quiet so far tonight. Grundy with another knockout there. He's had the most knockouts in Magpie history. Handball to Cotchen. The attempted smother. Just applied pressure. Martin, the little spinning move. Got it to Higgins. Higgins onto the left foot of Grigg. He had a good look. Now look how many rewalts got to beat. Three were back there. Caddy it was, in fact. And he's saying, I wanted it just a little further out in front. But repeat entries for the first time in how long? Yeah, well, for the whole game. Yep. Grimes at the back of Grundy. Greenwood had it taken away. Higgins to Lambert. Collingwood everywhere here. 
Aish off the mark in a hurry. Repeat entries, but Collingwood just getting numbers to where they're kicking the footy. Maynard in the back pocket. He's got a good long kick, and he uses it. Phillips did well, and then it gets over the back of Short. Phillips toe poking forward. Adams had an airy. Good pick up Short to Cotchen. Spreads it okay. Gets it to Prestia to fall forward. Oh, Millie Howe. Well done there by Aish. Martin tries to break the tackle. Doesn't really get an effective handball. Langdon's in there. Lambert got in hard and low. Martin's involved in a bit of a scuffle there. Off the ball. And Dusty unhappy with Aish. And there'll be a stoppage. They need a goal, Richmond. Well, Richmond are throwing everything this last five minutes. I won't say they've stopped the bleeding, but they've attempted to. And they've had multiple attempts in their forward 50. Here's another one. The umpire says you've got to keep going. Not the required journey. Little handball off to Prestia. The tackle from Trelaw, brilliant. Hoskin Elliott with the retrieval ball. But Rance on centre wing. They're all loaded up here on the north side. And not able to break a tackle. Collingwood's tackling tonight has been superb. Greg wide to conquer. Oh. Haven't been able to find that clear passage as a result of that duck. Conquer. Very, very wide to broad, and that'll be out of bounds on the fall. Oh, Chris can go quick here. My check's wow. working forward. And that's where he's going, Lingy, and he's got him. And he's got Varco over the top if he wants him. He just didn't quite get back on the mark quickly enough. He's been good, Marachek. They've all been good. Some have been great. Kicks to full forward. Hoskin Elliott almost, almost ran. His handball was not really to the advantage in the end. It didn't quite get to Lambert and a stoppage. Thank you. So Dusty unhappy with that. Sean Greg. My check from that stoppage, Adams, main, side bottom, ping pong. He could kick this, Chris. He could kick this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Do you know what? They're close. Richmond were coming, and they were coming, and they were coming, and... Collingwood stood strong and responded with that goal. The side bottom Brilliant. creative again in traffic. Picks the right option as he often does. Two, two goals for the year, two goals in this match. <laughs> well, seven Collingwood goals in a row has created this sort of reaction from the fans. Seven in a row. And as you said, Lingy. Richmond were in a passage there where they were given it everything. They threw everything at that last five or six minutes, Richmond. Felt it was going to get them a goal, but no. Nah. Pies responded. Back in the middle, Cox back onto the ground. Sire, Lambert, side bottom, sidestep, low ball. Look at that kick to the goalie. Have you ever seen anything like that out of the middle? The side, bottom, side bottom's been involved in the last two goals. The handball to Crisp and then that ball... He's just a brilliant player. That's a sizzler, Duck. Yep, and it had to be in that situation. Normally, he's got a deft touch when he kicks the ball to forwards, but that one, he knew it had to be hard and low because Rance was right there. Oh, he's coming a million miles now, Dugowie. The ball's coming at him quick, and it almost pushed his guts out his back. Dugowie from 40. He misses. Any opportunity now for Collingwood to certainly... Putting nails in. Not Six. quite there. So BT 6 1 from set shots, Colin, with their first miss. Nine goals, four to one goal, five. Caddy at the back. How did well. Adams, side bottom again. Crisp again. And he gets good length to fall forward to going. Oh, he's. What a mark! The one on one that we talked about all week. That's a special effort. He is something special, this kid. Who's he up against? Rance, and just great body work. And if you can get Rance in that situation, Rance likes to jump at the footy. You saw there, Dugowie, his use of his body is very good. 
He's kicked three. Colin would have kicked ten. Ten to one. This is nearly the most remarkable half of football I've witnessed as a commentator. I don't know about you guys. I just didn't expect it. I, I, I would agree with that. I can't believe it. I yeah, cannot on, believe on it. On a big occasion. Yeah. Is there going to be a lot of talk now about Richmond having... One match in 26 one match days. In 26 days. <laughs> Collingwood match hardened. Three points of margin, four minutes to go to half time. It now goes over to those Richmond leaders Trent Cochin, Sean Grigg, Dustin Mark, Alex Rance, all of them. They have got to find a way to turn this around. Oh, look, the Pies, they've played over two and a half thousand games. Have they played one better half than this here right now? As you say, Bruce, 10 goals to one. And it's just mind blowing what they're doing here at the moment. This is against the gun team, the performing team all year, the heavyweight team of the competition, the favourites to win this game. What prelim finals can do, as Duck has said, scoreboard pressure. Sire, inside 50. Grimes, little handball, Conker, to the ground, pressed here to tidy it up, and now they inch it out of defence. Short with the runoff half back. Rams the ball to Castagna. Big fly by Howe. Lambert, great tap to Higgins. Nice handball. McIntosh over the back rewalk. Goldsack did well in front. And that's a good result for Collingwood. There's Tyson Goldsack looking after Jack Rewalk. And the other leadership group, I reckon it's the coaching staff of Richmond. What can they do at halftime to sort of calm the troops and get something to go? You've got to get them better around the contest. Minus 20 in contested possession. Getting a smashing. You're right, they've got to clear their heads now. Get them to play with some sort of freedom. What about the body language on the bench? Caddy's kick. Side bottom, 22 to 22. What side bottom stats? Have you got better eyes than me? 16 disposals, five clearances. Massive game from Steele side bottom. Yeah, his run, Lingy, right from the start, start of the game, it really set the tone. That bounce they got off half back, they were able to take marks down the ground, but it was him. He sets the tone. Chris, cut off by Nan Kirby. Matthew, can you believe it? I don't think anyone can. It's unbelievable down here. The crowd, the Collingwood crowd, are obviously uh, up and about. And the players, they're just feeding off it now. They are playing out of their skin and Richmond are so reactive now they're, they're they're stunned out there well the pies will lock this last two and a half minutes down my check there they won't want the Tigers scoring an easy or a cheapy here Grimes near the interchange bench right in front of the Tigers area there little handball by Conker nice one to Martin Martin got out of trouble beautiful to Cochin Cochin to Rance oh what was that what was that from Alec Rance he was in two minds. Now he gets a chance to make amends from 55 metres out. He's got Rewalt deep. Rewalt. Did he get boot to ball? Goal umpire said no. And his body language says definitely no. Gee, Rance was a strange kick in the middle of the ground, wasn't it? Well, Nervous kick. three goals ago, we said they had to get the next two. They're such a long way back, but anything will do now. Just... They just need something to take into half time. Adams, crisp, doubled his goal tally for the year in this match. Pendlebury, Main, Castagna, Main's tackle was good. Got down low. Martin and Cochin. Castagna, still Castagna. And then his little half grubber, refold. He's normally clever, Jack. Well done, goal sack. Rioli's fly, almost ace. Kick by Lambert, missing. Missing. Just read out Steel side bottom stats. What about Jack Chris? 16 disposals, two goals, 430 metres gained from half back, going at 90% kicking efficiency, okay. just controlling everything. Two goals from half back. Amazing. Wow. Half a footy. Five goals in the quarter, unanswered to Collingwood. Grundy, McIntosh, Meyer check. Sire, been impressive in this game. 
Side bottom, stripped away by Martin. Martin to Rioli. Rioli looking to straighten up. Finally got it back here. Lambert has a ping from 45. Desperate need of a goal. Timber work for Lambert. Nothing going right. He's had a couple of pings, Lambert, in the last minute. Just the pressure, even Dusty there, who was almost within range, but he couldn't get going, and Rioli couldn't get a clear kick away. It's been so impressive by the black and the white. And then Curvis at the back. Sire, under pressure, side bottom, Grundy, Nan Curvis, McIntosh on the left foot. Main underneath, Phillips falls over, and Higgins, the kid, the teenager, one of two out there tonight, the only one for the Tigers, has an opportunity to give Richmond a scrap, a little scrap to take in at half-time. He just has to kick it, we know that. He does. He does. So, what does that mean for them? That late, late goal, what can that do for them when they go into the rooms at half-time? They get it back to 44. It's a famous number, yeah. 44 points, isn't it? 1970 grand final half-time margin, Bruce. A lot of fans in this stadium would be taking a boat peep at the scoreboard at the moment and going... Oh, my God. So Carlton gave Collingwood a 44-point yep. start and ran them over with yep. Hamble and Barassi, eh? Teddy Hopkins <laughs> stepped go. to the plate. 11 seconds in the half remaining. Collingwood by 44 points. That was the Tigers' first goal since the 15-minute mark of the first quarter. Sire tackled by Edwards. Lambert, that's going to be it. The siren's going to sound. Half-time has come. The MCG, at least half of it, is shocked. They are absolutely ecstatic, the other half. It is amazing. The underdogs, probably in this game, Collingwood. I didn't think they could play this good, and they have. In fact, they have a 44-point half-time margin, Bruce, and they have been simply sensational. 5-2 in each of the quarters against the goal. Cox with three and Gary with three. Side bottom Adams with 20 each. Grundy's dominated. It's been the complete performance. It has been quite outstanding, astonishing, hard to get your head around. And Jeremy Howe's playoff halfback has been phenomenal, Daisy. That went to plan. It did. Look, we're playing pretty good brand footy at the moment, but um, yeah, it's only a half done. We'll park that and then move on. And Mason Cox, everyone's leapt to his defence from Collingwood as he's copped a bit of criticism in the last few weeks. We're told his role is to just contest and bring it to ground, but I guess you'll take it if he's going to clunk them. 100%. Look, Mason's a, clearly a key pillar for us to kick to, and if he's clunking them, that's a bonus, but he's bringing them to deck, bringing all the small guys into play. And what about down back? It seemed early on when you were under a lot of pressure, there was a big focus on aggressive spoils, clearing the area. Was that part of the plan? Yeah, definitely. Richmond are a team of momentum. They like, like soft drops, and they want to just keep the ball moving. If we can clear the area with big spoils, it takes the smalls out of the game. Thanks, Jess. Good luck in the second half. We've got two great teams. The best team all year is currently 44 points down. Can you believe that? Mason Cox has played a major part, kicking three goals in that second quarter. And Tom Brown caught up with his parents, Phil and Jay, at halftime. Thanks, Hammer. Talk about bigger than Texas and talk proud parents. I'm joined here by Phil and Jay Cox. Welcome. Bruce McAvaney at Jim Nance or Bob Costas has described Mason's performance then as one of the greatest performances in AFL and potentially even sport history. What do you make of that? <laughs> That's pretty exciting. I think the whole team has had a phenomenal game so far. Let's hope they keep it up for the second half. Phil, when you arrived probably bleary-eyed on Thursday morning, did you think you'd hear them chanting USA, USA tonight? Well, I... <laughs> It's just pure excitement out here. And uh, the USA channel, I love to hear it. That means Mason's doing something out there. <laughs> and pardon the pun, given we're talking about America, but uh, Mason genuinely trumped them in the uh, in the first half. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he did he had a good game. But like I said, the whole team's been awesome. So I hope they keep it up. He has been incredibly awesome. There's no doubt about that. And life as a president, one is the winner or winning side of the first half. And 
Peggy O'Neill just doing it the way that she does it. Sitting next to Ben Crow there and Eddie up and down. He doesn't know whether to sit or stand or cheer or what. You'd think with Ed that they were losing the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's passionate. He is passionate like no oh, other. It. And it doesn't mean that Peggy's not. She just does it in a different way. So start of the second half about to get underway. Collingwood unbelievably by that incredibly famous half-time margin. Lead it by 44 points. The margin that Carlton came from behind in 1970. It sort of changed the way footy was played, to be truthful. With the runoff half-back and the handball and Teddy Hopkins coming off the bench and igniting their forward line. So can the Tigers produce a miracle? They need it. Their great run of 22 consecutive wins. Looks like it's coming to an end at the MCG. Then Curvis out of the centre. Good start. Castagna front and centre takes the mark. And then goes short and he finds Jack. Who's within range. He had a lot of the ball revolt actually in the opening term, hasn't he? Watch for Mason Cox. Here he is. This is it. Comes from centre half forward, full forward, down to stand on the mark. Just so Jack has to kick it that little bit higher. Saw Revolt trying to avoid him, didn't we, by running around a bit to get that distance. So he's had a fair bit of the ball, Jack. He's had a few shots. They've got to nail every opportunity they get. We know that. Is it coming back? It looks good. It looks good. It's the perfect start. They're a long way back, but they've made a start. How much belief is there? That's the thing you want to know, isn't it? Is it... Is it real? Is it manufactured? Well, as Richo said at quarter time, straight away they're talking about making history. Yeah, we know we're down, but you know we can do this, boys. And I guess it's the only way to be. It's the only way you have to be, but that's a perfect start. Well, they kicked the last two goals. Last five scoring three, shots for the three, Tigers. Three, they've kicked two goals, three with it. You only have to trim 20 points off the margin this quarter. You, you can do the rest in the last quarter. So it seems a long way. Biggest margin in this game, I think, has been 53. Knocked down Edwards, Grundy. If Collingwood can answer, that will be an almighty thump to the Tigers. And Dagoe is going to give them a chance. Yeah. He checks the mark. Umpire Matt Stevick says, come back here, Alex. His power and speed off the mark able to get to that footy and, and Rance isn't slow but Rance can normally get a spoil on those but Goey's too quick. He reached it off the boot so quickly as well which gets him into that position in the first place. For his fourth goal and a real dagger into the chest of the Tigers if he were successful he misses. Do you think Grimes would be a better matchup for him or not? The, the way he's playing right now, I think he, and the way Collingwood played in that first half, he, he, he'll beat either of them. Okay. Rance is that good, but yeah, perhaps they send Grimes to him so Rance can start coming off and helping out a little bit in the air, get their structure back the way they want it. Asprey, Grundy just worked underneath it. Greenwood's hands were good. Pendlebury gone. Oh, in the ball. Conquer, so they took the advantage and they didn't really get me. Back here. Gee, that's interesting. That was, a, that was a wait and see whether it worked or not. That's yeah. not the way it works, is it? No. Well, I don't think anyone had possession of it, though, did they? I yeah. thought the handball was there. Yeah. The player determines whether they take advantage. So the ball squeezes out of the back. Chris, what a star. Langdon to Maynard, and then Maynard kicks a good one to Phillips, and then Phillips is off on the wing. Driving ball on the head of Cox. In comes Ashby, flossed in there as well. Gee, that's a good mark. How good has his contested marking been today? That'll be play on. He's come off sideways on the mark. Now he sends it high to the goal square. To go in there, Meyer check in front, out the back. To go, he kicks an open goal. He's kicked his fourth. You asked before, Bruce, if that belief of Richmond would be real or would be manufactured. You get an early goal like you did from Jack Rewald. It's all manufactured at the start, but you just have that little inkling of belief. Start becoming real. The best way to shut it up, bang, kick a goal up the other end of the ground. And that puts it all back 
the doubt in the minds of the Richmond players. And Lingy, they wanted a half back again, in. and Phillips was the outlet player. This is extraordinary, Wayne. But once again, that mark down the line contested. Seven marks now, and that that just sets the game up. And he played on quickly, got the ball in, and that go against the goal. And they have made the change now. You asked for Bruce. Grimes to Dugowie. Rance has moved off him. He's playing as that loose now, making sure he can help out, probably on Mason Cox. And now Collingwood get a loose as well. So they're able to control it a little bit more, even if Richmond do win it. Holding. Collingwood. Collingwood's midfielder smash them, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, Push out. Adams has been as good as probably everyone but side bottom in the middle of the ground. It's been brilliant. That's a good kick to Sire. This kid's been good as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful sizing, isn't he? First year player. Cox 20, is out. 20 year old. Cox again. Oh, he's done it again. It is rewriting football history here. An American giant who was a speculative take by a club. Look at, look at the way Collingwood have worked here to open up a little bit of space. Look he at that. Comes back. One lead, and then he bangs into Asprey here, and off for the second lead. Lingy. And can you believe some people were saying his two finals weren't good enough and he shouldn't be in the team? And, oh. Well, everybody's entitled to make one little blue, but what he's doing here tonight is changing, I think, the way a lot of people are thinking about the future of the game. The thing I like about the Collingwood players, they, when they see him, they deliver it in the fashion that he needs it. Yeah. High. High on. Yep. And their forward line changes all the time. One minute it's small, next minute it's tall. So they've really got to think about their kicks in. Ace couldn't control it. Edwards out the back, low ball. Here comes Rewald again. So Jack, a big chance to make it two goals to one in the quarter. Jack seems to be their only target going inside 50 at the moment. Guys like Caddy have to get into the game. He's been really quiet. But I think every time they go forward, he's the only one that seems to be presenting to the right spot. He's taken seven marks also. So Rewalt, every goal is a must-kick goal. But when you're the big goal kicker and you've got a set shot 30 metres out directly in front, it's almost imperative in this situation. He doesn't let his team down. It's back to 40 points. He's actually having a pretty good night, to be honest. I mean, the team's getting flogged. This guy's having a good night. Yeah, if definitely. you can have a good night in those circumstances. Absolutely, he's having a good night. He's the only one, as Duck said, who's giving them a little tiny sniff, a little glimmer of hope that, well, if we can start winning the ball through the middle, at least we've got a winner up forward. That brilliant picture of the MCG. Three to Revolt. The one good thing okay, for nice. Richmond, the scoreboard's ticking over. Well the scoreboard's ticking over. <laughs> it's just going to tick over their end all the time, but this next goal is massive, you would think. We know they're so far back, but we know what they can do in the last quarter. Greenwood's up and under. Bouncing ball. Martin worked underneath. Greenwood's been terrific. Ball into the centre. Adams got away from Grigg. Gets the ball forward, Cox takes the ball to ground and then tries to paddle along, doing it all. And then Short under pressure. Short and Cox are the one sentence. They don't really go together, do they? No, they do not, Bruce. Complete opposites, Castagna. <laughs> Tigers mounting a little mini campaign here. Great. High ball by Castagna. Greenwood in front, Gold sack the big spoil. Martin, the little fend off. Prestia caught here down low. I reckon Dusty's got to be more aggressive. I mean, the handballs, he's got to break a line and kick a goal. Yep. And Brody Grundy having huge influence. 13, hit outs to advantage to zero. Knocked down Prestier again. Steaming off, Martin, a little kick inside, Maynard. One of the big differences, too, in the game is I don't think Richmond have taken a contested mark, you know, 60 metres out from goal, and that's where Colin would have won it back all night. And down the other end, we know what's happening with Cox. Jack Higgins, I think the only one, Richo, having a look now, that's done that, which is uh, ironic in itself. Side bottom to Maine. Been in a couple of prelims before Maine as a docker. One of them, 
they won, of course, and got to a grand final here. So he's in the back half. Well, we don't see Main doing that all that often. He got himself into a slight pickle, and that gold sack back to Main, back to Sire, back to Chris. They've worked it to Adams, and then Adams goes to half forward to go. He got down low. Rance, so Grimes enabled Rance to get off there. Broad, Graham, Brian Hoskin Elliott, Broad, toe poking off the ground. No mark taken. Paddle forward. Castagna. Missed by Edwards. He's been quiet. Going to ground. How? Prestia didn't give it off. Should have. Main picks it up. Handball good. Side bottom. Brilliant. Gets it away to Howe. And Howe gets it away. Full stop nearly. Three on one. Rance covers it off. No problems. He went. Little handball backwards now in the hands of Flost. And he'll be run down if he's not careful. Sends a long ball deep. Mains in underneath it. Richmond applying enormous pressure. Caddy couldn't get out on the left. Brought it back on the right. In the goal square. It's Dusty. Push in the back. It's a push in the back. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It was there. Tyson Goldsack. It was only a little push, but it was there. Mightn't be paying that next year from what we hear. Jimmy Steins in terms of international football is bigger than this guy. This is the stuff of legends, isn't it? Cox's is kick. That mark coming out of defence, so important for Collingwood, because they win it here and they get an inside 50. Ty Keneally's probably scratching his head. Gee, I've played pretty well for a long time. I'm a premiership player. <laughs> Little handball back inside. Conk has got to make it with it. Look at the pressure. Every time they get in the footy, there's someone on. This time, Prestia trying to thread the needle. Greenwood can't get there. Caddy did real well. Handball's off. Hurley on the left boot. He can go the journey from here. Long ball. Rewald on the line. There's a little bit of urgency and push about Richmond at the moment. They are pressing, aren't they? Collingwood are holding oh. strong, but this is Richmond's big push for the night. Matthew, do you give them a chance? Oh, very, very slim one. Oh, look, I can't see Collingwood dropping off. They're still playing pretty well. Push. So, the push for Grundy. I mean, it's a long Grundy, way back from here. And Collingwood have been too good. I reckon Richo summed it up. Collingwood have... They have to drop off a lot, don't they? Absolutely. Grundy to Trelaw, and then Trelaw back inside. And the thing, with the comeback for me, you've got to take a fair few chances, and Collingwood's run is pretty good back the other way, so... Come on, look, Everything Richo. has to go right, BT. Come on, Richo, everything get up, Everything has mate. to go right, BT. Get up. <laughs> Ace got it from Main to side bottom, and then side bottom with that lovely leg of his to half forward, gets to the back. Stevenson did well, did really well, and then a contest, and Richmond get them down. I think to say Richmond can win from here, you're disrespecting how good Collingwood have been. But maybe how good Richmond have shown us they've been for such a long stretch. Well, Richo, I'm not going home yet. At 39 points and Richmond challenging, I want to see Collingwood nail it shut, and right at the moment it's not. Call. Crowd are still there. Few players starting to rise with their performances here for the Tigers. Can they turn it into a little bit of scoreboard pressure on the Maggies? Let it go, Scotty. Let it go. Let it go. Don't do it. Out of bounds. Okay, Almost on the wing. 39 point Brady, margin. Brady, Great shot of this incredible arena. Six 90,000 plus crowds. This year is a record at this ground along the line here, and that'll be out of bounds on the full ace to take the kick. Third Friday night in a row, and me, BT but over 90, fourth stay final out. with over 90 here out of the Just five. Amazing. Out. It's been brilliant. And of course, the right teams in terms of the crowds, and none bigger than these two. Side bottoms kick, my check, Rance. Richmond. He has got more involved release from Dugowie, hasn't he? He has. He's able to be that third man up. He's, he's playing loose at the moment. Short to Hooley. So Hooley and Short. Hooley 
in the grand final last year, short for most of this year. All that bounce and run that we expected from them. Not so far tonight. They get it out, though. Here is Grimes from Rance. How clear are their heads? Can they work their way through the Collingwood maze? Just a little bit nervous to pull the trigger then, weren't they? Yep. Dusty went past it. Maynard looking for the free. Crisp. Smothered by Prestia. He's lifted Prestia, no doubt about it. And just that foray off half back then. Lingy and Duck. It just Brody, looked Sean. like they were a little bit hesitant Sean because Green, of the pressure Green, of the game. There's a little bit more of a slow movement, but even those short, sharp handballs in and around there, they, they normally execute that perfectly. Well Not doing that tonight. Grundy, fantastic to Jalor. Hooley now. But Graham White ignores that for the more direct option. Here comes Rewalt. Up over the top, couldn't get it. Crisp. Sideways handball, side bottom under pressure. Great release on the main. Little chipper here. Trav Varko's mark. They'll keep going here. Varko goes short to Thomas. Thomas looking for the 50, not going to get it. Good call. Two side bottoms. Quick release there was outstanding to main. That kick very wide and out of play. And the one player for Richmond who you think could get them back into the game is Dusty Martin. He's had plenty of the ball, 15 touches, three kicks, 12 handballs done. And that was a smart kick there. Degoe never wanted that footy. They wanted a boundary throw in, just take some time off the clock. And Grundy has dominated here and he's got Grigg against him. Yep. Undersized, and there you go, Duck. There you go to Pendlebury. And then with a high ball, where's Degoe? There he is against Grimes. Grimes worked him under. Asprey Myers. Oh, can you believe it? What does Steve War say? You drop the cup. That really hurts. Really, really hurts. He's a good player, this bloke. Yeah, and it was a old-fashioned football, isn't he? Presents well, competes, and generally finishes off his work. Plays within his limits, I reckon. Yeah, he does. <laughs> There are incredible stories everywhere for this Collingwood team. Just continue to do the little things well, and hasn't he had a wonderful season? Come in to play a role, and boy, what a role he's played. Goal for goal in the third quarter. In fact, they've gone backwards one point here, the Tigers, for all of their good efforts here. Collingwood have had the answers in the end. Lambert in front of Maine, Rioli, McIntosh. Back to Rioli, tried to take him on, and Ash was like a trailer hanging on. There was no way knowing he was going to unhitch. Goes out wide. How McIntosh and boundary line. And that's been Collingwood all night, BT. Those tackles that at times Richmond break, they've just stuck those tackles all night. Not a player's been able to break any of their tackles. Too often you see a Rioli get run down, yep. do you? Nope. So well done to Aish. Had the PCL during the year, missed a lot of footy. Cochin to Grigg, and then Grigg spirals the ball. Revolt their one hope for it. Oh, what a mark for Langdon against the flow. Brilliant mark. He was massive in last week's game in the last quarter when the Giants were just having their last roll of the dice. He took countless intercept marks. None better than that one, though. Look at that. Contested marks, 14 to 6 in favour of the Magpies in this game. Trelaw, Grigg, had all of the answers so far, Collingwood, and I'll tell you what, with seven minutes to go in the quarter, they could probably lock down the last three or four Guys, minutes of this quarter, and then it's a mammoth here. task for the Tigers in the last. They are doing it beautifully here at the moment. Their cat, their coach, Nathan Buckley, looks fairly relaxed and calm with their efforts at the moment. Prestia. Time just getting away from the Tigers. Main, Pendlebury, Rant in front. Did very well. It's been one move that probably helped them a little bit. There's such a long way back. How can they find two or three goals before three-quarter time? Because that's what they have to do. Revolts, big fly, Langdon, Main. 
I think it's as good as I've seen Maine play in a long, long time. For the Dockers, all the pies. Good tackle. And rewarded. So Conker to take it. Hurley getting a bit of the ball. High ball. They've been hoping and hoping for a big mark. Caddy was a flyer. Lambert, Maine again. Rioli overran it. Not having a great night. Caddy run down by Maine. Should have been rewarded. To Law. Phillips was a hot footy. Quick kick out by Higgins. Heard the call. To Law held up by Nan Curvis. It'll be a stoppage. Probably would have played that long kick into Rewalt perfectly tonight. So often those smaller forwards get that ball front and square and get a shot on goal. They know exactly where it's going and they've set up perfect. Cox. Boundary line's a win for the Pies here, but it's not going to go over us. Well, it is now. And that's almost what you have to resort to now. The, the miracle play for Richmond in that situation. You're talking about duck the long kick in. Rewalt nearly needs to take mark of the year. Caddy tries to kick goal of the year there. So their basic way of playing, their system, is completely broken down. So Maine to switch it to the south side. They've got the loose out. They have got the loose out in their gunning side bottom. Side bottom doesn't see an opportunity forward, so he holds. And he will know time is ticking away here in the third. How caught by Rioli. And that's hurt the Howe ankle as well. Clear it out. Clear it out, Jeremy. He'll be all right. He'll recover from that. But he wasn't oh, happy. Man, I think he was hoping there'd be a Come shepherd on. or some assistance there. Rioli now in the meantime oh, no, goes forward with a sure. deep penetrating oh. 50 ball out the back as Pendlebury thought about a moment for Phillips. Handball back inside, kept alive by Rewalt. Side bottom to the rescue, spearing handball to Chris. This time he goes for the all or nothing kick across the face of goal, out towards the MCC member side of the ground. Grigg is under Phillips pressure. And Phillips was able to run him over the line. Do you know it's the first time, Lingy, I've seen a team look quicker than Richmond in a long time? Yeah. I agree with you. And I reckon, just look at Jeremy how they put up a bit sore from that. The outside run and support of Phillips on one side and side bottom on the other has helped with what you're talking about, Bruce. They've been brewing all night. Oh, not 15. Heard Play the call. On. Castagna belt to back. Oh, Varco's half thought he was exquisite, wasn't it? How good was that? And then there is Phillips finding Adams. These oh, outback kicks from their back line oh, has been one Where? of the great things in their game tonight. It just relieves that pressure that Richmond yeah. want to bring, doesn't it, yeah, Richard? They've been able to win it back, and they've always had an outlet kick that then sets up their forward thrust. Really shone right from the start of the game. I'm intrigued to know, Duck. I'll give you a minute while we wait for this passage to end. But if you're the Collingwood coach, and in three or four minutes you're going to go down and talk to the boys at three-quarter time, what are you going to say to them? What advice are you going to give to play this last quarter when they have such a commanding lead? Floston. Handball, Rioli, Cochin, Graham. Graham with a kick inside 50, one-on-one. -on -one. Not to the advantage of Rewald. He was heading further out. He had to pull up and stop. Caddy, little one around the corner. Nicely done to Hooley. I think they've played it perfectly this quarter, BT. They've, they've done things in this quarter just to take things off the clock. Kicks inside forward 50 when they know they haven't got an obvious target. They've gone wide goes out of bounds, they get another stoppage. Well, what, what so just little at, things. At three-quarter time, are you going to say go, or are you going to say, let shut to go. it down? Continue to keep, go. Keep playing our football. Yep. So here is Hooley once again, Mason Cox making it hard on the mark. Look how high he's kicked it. Look how high he's kicked it. No one's got on the line and touched it. So Richmond, their third of the quarter. Fagan. Just need two more. They need two more. I don't think they'll get them, but that's... They need two more. They need two more quickly, Bruce, don't they? Yeah, they do. No, they do. And it's unlikely, Wayne, because yeah. they've been outplayed completely, but they've at least done one thing. They've been able to get the scoreboard ticking over in this quarter a bit. <coughs> well, this has got maybe repercussions for further on. How, with that... Ankle, we know he had the big corky. What did he miss about five games coming into the finals? Here we go. 
So the Tigers with three goals in this term, two goals only in the opening half. They're such a long way back, and we're not expecting a revival, but Adams to full forward. Came off Grimes, did well. Majek, Stevenson, Hurley, Pendlebury spreads it out wide. Stevenson back, Varko off a step, clever kick, Majek touching through. It was touch, it's a behind. And that's that's pretty big, I reckon. That's huge. He, that's crucial early on. He took the Martin match up whenever he was deep, but also just to come off the big spoils. So important to them. I'm pretty sure, Richo, Daisy, it's, it's, it's an ankle issue, yeah? Well, he pointed to the front of his shin, actually, BT, oh, so it might have just been a contact injury that they're going down to have a look at. Ran off under his own steam and didn't look too inhibited, but we'll keep an eye on it. The one from Grimes to Rioli. Rioli around the corner. Higgins. High footy. Langdon under real Richmond pressure. Asprey did well. Two minutes 41 in the quarter remaining. Martin with a perfectly placed kick for Rewalt. And Rewalt should go back and kick the goal. What do you reckon, BT? Is he... You know his technique yeah. than anyone. What does he do here? He's just inside left post. Don't kick it outside the left post. Inside left post and his natural arc. A little bit of left to right will work this beautifully. He's shown that tonight. He gets a one or two metres of movement. If he kicks it, have they got a chance? Yes, they have. Absolutely, they have. They'll be back to 34. Rewalt comes in here. It comes back now. So he's got four. And the Tigers are back to 34. And he's kicked three goals in this quarter. He's kicked three third-quarter goals. It's, it's been a magnificent, actually, individual performance. It, it has, and he's competed hard when it's been kicked in high and long. He's put it to the ground. They just need it. He needs a couple of other forwards to chop, chop him out. And Dutt Lingy mentioned Martin not kicking the ball. He kicked that one perfectly to Revo. <laughs> he's a beautiful kick. He needs to win a bit more of that footy. Oh, what a performance by Jack Revo. Trying to jack, drag his team back into this one. Just trying to lift them, anything. Can they find another goal here to give themselves a hope? Koch it out of the centre, streaming through, kicking to fall forward. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Oh, not sure, not sure. Don't think so, Bruce. Uh, he doesn't look confident, Higgins. I believe it's behind. You have to check the ball was kicked over the goal line. Score of you. Umpire's call is much behind. Please check that it wasn't kicked over. Wait. If you've got a boot to it, it would have certainly been a goal. He's had one miracle close to the line at this ground. I mean, <coughs> with a contender of goal of the year, but... Well, that angle doesn't show it, so you can only hope there's another angle that does for Richmond fans. Does he get the heel? He's lace. <laughs> the lace counts, doesn't it? He's... A lot of lace there that's flipping around a bit. Gets the heel, I reckon, as it's... Review complete. Over. Decision on scoreboard. Yeah, that'll be a behind. Player always knows, doesn't he? He was never confident there, but they have kicked four goals to two in this quarter, the Tigers. We've got a minute and 37 remaining here in the third quarter. Another goal would be very handy. Now, they have it locked in their forward end, their favourite position right here and right now for the Tigers. To get it under 30 would be a huge mental hurdle. Short boundary throw in. Rioli, Cochin, Grigg. Inside 50. If Edwards goes, he could have almost marked that. He was clearing the path for Rewalt. Ace has got it. He's wrapped up in the Edwards tackle. No prior opportunity. A minute 14 left in the third. They've generated 16 inside 50s this quarter. It's in their half. And Curvis belting the ball forward. Beautiful hands. He gets great tackle made. Langdon almost cut up by Rewalt. And Sire, right place, right time. Collie would have been wonderful. And then Phillips down the line. Important here. Majek made the contest with Asprey. 
with uh, Vlosten, I should say, back to Vlosten. Great tackle by you know who, the big guy from Texas through Oklahoma with a bit of USA bravado there. Well, he's cocked a stiff arm to the mush as well. Probably well, should have got a free. And look at Richo and Daisy looking on there in the background. A little one out for Rioli. Here they go. Cotton. Oh boy. Oh boy. They're certainly rolling the dice at those stoppages though, BT. Really proactive and just going to surge it forward. Cotchin got on the end of that one, but wasted the kick. They have to roll the dice, don't they? Adams. To Grundy. They know the clock is ticking at 20 seconds. Yeah, the bench would be telling them right now. Trelaw's telling Grundy right now how long there is left. Moving on. 15 seconds. Goes down the line. Hugs the boundary. No winner in the air. Penalty to try and keep it alive. Stevenson to just give them a little chance. With five seconds in the quarter remaining. To Goey. Got it to Thomas. Can he get boot to ball? Richmond fighting for survival here. They give themselves just the tiniest little glimmer of hope. It's tiny. It's achievable. They've cut it back from 44 at half time to 33 at quarter time. And that man there... Jack Rewald on fire in that quarter gives them some hope. Collingwood by 33. Kick five of the last seven. That gives Damien Hardwick some hope, and so do these numbers. Have a look at those differentials for the Tigers in the fourth and final terms and what about the two matches they played against one another this year eight goals to three in round six steaming away there and a similar story in round 19 five goals to one as I said they've kicked five for the last seven the greatest margin in any final at three-quarter time overcome 28 points Carlton over Collingwood 1945 freedom final Daisy and Richo do you believe we're just having a look at Jeremy Howe right now, Bruce, doing his run-throughs, back out of the race. The action looked like it could be a high ankle sprain or syndesmosis injury, as they're known. The foot rotates underneath him. Went down into the rooms and just came out of the quarter-time break. Yep, definitely ankle, isn't it? No doubt about that, looking at that replay. So will they risk him? Reckon they're keeping him warm, BT, just in case. Yeah, I think you're right, Richo. I think there's no need to at the moment. Little one here from Lambert. They've only got to survive. Kind of would have got to survive this first 15 minutes. Then you don't. 15 know. minutes. You're right, BT. That's the number. Richmond are going to come. They're going to press with everything. Their pressure's going to be huge. They're going to play on. They're going to knock it on. They're going to surge onto it. But in 15 minutes, Collingwood holds strong. Yeah. Done and dusted. Side bottom. Half back, so a huge 15 minutes for both sides. The game in the balance in this 15 right now. Grigg picks it up, bangs it inside 50, high ball. Asprey's there's that rewalk. What a mark! Jack Rewalk will line up for his fifth goal and will never kick a more important one. That's Asprey a, did well to help him out. That's an unbelievable mark. He was out of position. And just to keep his... He takes his eyes off the footy for a split second and then to find it again. And now he's, he's winded himself here, Duck, or else he has rib issues. I'd say winded from the fall more than anything. He's going to take his kick, so his 30 seconds starts... I don't know when it's supposed to start. I guess it starts now. now. It's the guy that would have been playing on him right now. Rewalt with a massive kick. If this not, is a big swing in the game to get it back to 27. If not playing on him, coming over the top and smashing that one there and not letting him take that mark. Gee, the 20s sound nice, don't they? Rewalt for his fifth goal. They've got it within 27 points very early in the last. Well, well we talked about his effort in the third quarter. Um, Cotchin and Martin lifted as well, but this guy, I reckon, single-handedly has kept them in the match and might help them. Yeah, no question about that, Bruce. Here, it's game on now. 
Do you reckon it is? Uh, well, if you look at their body of work over the whole year, their last quarters have been unbelievable. Yep, turned quickly. Well, they got a quick goal. <laughs> One of the great marks in finals footy. This becomes a situation where I don't think you can wait and see with Howe anymore. You've probably got to risk him now. Throw him out there and let him be the one who comes third over the top and stops a red-hot rewalt. Kick six of the last eight, the Tigers. Grundy, Hurley, Majacek, Pendlebury, Sidebottom. Majacek, Trelaw, well played, Lambert. To Cochin. Cochin on the left, bit scrubby, but he gets it out wide to the advantage. Asprey went forward late in the third quarter. McIntosh goes back to Asprey. He fell over. He's had a difficult night, Asprey, to be honest. Trelaw goes back. Side bottom. You'd see a lot of him off half back in this last quarter. Cox did well again. He did well again. He forces a stoppage. Well, 27 points the margin. Once again there, though, Collingwood's pressure just enough. Richmond looked like they were out a couple of times and just able to get the ball back. First time you've seen Bucks sort of moving in the chair Twi for the whole night. Twitchy. <coughs> Twitchy. And the boys up here in the comm box are now just starting to get back on board with the possibility here, Bruce. 27 <laughs> has been very, very hard to convince all night. And all of a sudden, the Tigers are mounting a campaign here. They will go forward inside 50 again. Lambert drops a sitter. Langdon to keep him honest. The Tigers Higgins. Little handball. Langdon did well. Outside, under pressure. Hoskin Elliott. They're forcing them to the boundary line. The Tigers just keep coming and coming and coming and coming. They're down 27. They are officially back in business. Gee, big drop by Lambert. Okay, thank you. Doesn't do that too often. He was in the All Australian 40 squad, wasn't he? And then Curvis and Grundy. Prestia. Grundy did so well. Side bottom on the left. He'll play back half for this last quarter. Big flies at the back. Edwards belting forward only as far as Main, who has played a very, very good game. Sat behind the footy a lot tonight. Gee, they've got nervous. Gee! Look at this! Rewalt spoils Greenwood, locks it inside 50. Play of the night from Jack Rewalt. Play of the night. And boy, have the black and white got twitchy. Bucks was twitchy. The players a little now as well. Nan Purvis. And BT, they've got on top around the contest, Richmond. Plus eight since halftime. They were minus 15 at halftime. They are coming. They are swarming. Little one off the ground. Prestia had the ball held by side bottom. Thank you. They've got to score. They've got to continue to score the Tykes. Can't leave it all to the last 15 or Collingwood will shut the game down. Lambert around the corner. One hand to Asprey. Not paid and rightly so. Not enough. Not enough. Never had control. You heard the umpire. Not enough. Not enough. Stop each. Left forward pocket. Always fun when a number 12 for Richmond goes forward, Bruce. Oh, no doubt about that. And he's down below. They've moved him forward because they needed another tall target. They haven't been able to take a mark down the line all night, apart from Revolt inside 50. Four and a half goals. Grundy comfortably did it so well to his captain. Pendlebury gets some distance. Nankurva set himself. Well done, Cox. And well done, Hoskin Elliott. Against the flow broad to Grimes, to Rance to short now he's normally a good user short not sure about oh yes it's okay hurling to Rance Rance into Rioli and then Rioli half volley to Edwards Martin Dusty couldn't quite it's been one of those nights Hurley off the ground bouncing ball Castagna Castagna Higgins Revolt there's a free kick Higgins has got a free kick right for the goal They can't win a ball, Collingwood. Now, thank you. Just here, bad luck, mate. It was hot. Right on it. Time on. 
Thanks, mate. Right on it. No, that, he, thank you. Thank you. Well, he kicked Mason, one Mason, you've got to come back earlier in the night. You're on it. You're on it. Doesn't waste any time. They're coming. The tiger begins to roar for the first time tonight. Wow. Gee, almost. Collie would need the next goal. Oh, nice. Yeah. To settle them down, to settle the nerves. They doubt would be in their heads now. Their pressure. We talk about their pressure and that, that the fact that they can do it for longer and harder than their opposition. That's that's their mantra. Eddie Maguire pondering Mark Anderson in front of him, the CEO, the Here coach, Nathan Buckley on the phone. Closest they've been, the Tigers, since the 27-minute wow. mark of the first quarter. Grundy, little knockdown. They need a steadier here, the Pies. The Tigers have been mounting this campaign, really, since the start of the third quarter. Greg, they've played much better. Collingwood just need a score if they can get a goal. The whole dimension, this changes. Main tackled high. I'll come through, man. I and don't high. think Chris Main will be trying what he tried before from that position either. He just needs to go down the line, Lingy. Yep, within your limitations here. Unless something is obvious on, which it's not. Well, he's going to go across to Chris. Well, that's a kick he can make. Chris to Howe. How short ball, Grundy pushing right up to get on the end of this. Proud on the edge of their seat at the moment. They know the next goal to the Tigers, and it is absolutely on. Collingwood in a game. Look, they're under enormous pressure at the start, we know that. But now, can they hang on? Cox pushed out of the way by Rant. Rioli, little knock forward, just missed Castagna. How? Penelope, Crisp, Maynard, Maynard under pressure. Brilliant Collingwood play out of the back half. And side bottom says, fellas, we will just steady this down for the moment. And Jeremy Howe involved twice back on the ground. This is where they're, they're just trying to control the footy now, Collingwood, just slowing the game down. But they're not going to be able to do it for time off the minutes. No. I don't think they're looking to run time off the clock. I think they're just looking to get back in rhythm and in control. Cox again, I mean, it has been a colossus tonight. He's the best man on the ground. Oh, for me. Play on, play on! Me! Careful kick down that line to Marcek and Grundy in because, the boundary throw in. Because those contested marks down the line have been the difference. Richmond haven't taken those marks 65, 70 out down the line. They're worth so much to a team and he's done that and Matthew if they win tonight he will be the most talked about man on either side going into the grand final oh, of course because he's just so tall if he gets a jump at it you can't stop him Grundy and Mancurvis have been at it all night Pendlebury belting forward to Goey to Goey still to Goey little squeeze Trelaw might 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 does he oh he does he gets what they needed Great goal by Adam Talor, but again, Doug, you guys just been talking about it. Mason Cox's mark just took away that pressure and that feeling of Richmond coming. They could have it in their part of the ground. And then a little bit of chaos their way. Tapped the ball on, and Adam Trelaw was the one who made the most of it. It's because it was down that end of the ground, though. He's done it on all parts of the ground tonight. Well, Collingwood are on 85 here at the moment. They are 12 and set when they score 85 or more. That's Mark of Court Arena, the live site, just a couple of hundred metres from here. here we go. Trelaw, I think I know which side he wants to be on right now. It's the side he's playing with, there's no doubt about it. Out of the middle, they come here again. High footy, that relieves an enormous amount of pressure for Collingwood. Hoskin Elliott to Phillips. Can it inspire them to go on here? Short attacks it, straight lines it. Hoskin Elliott again to Phillips. Phillips wrong foot on the right. Here's to going. Big crash. Big commitment from Broad in the air to help out Grimes. Great stuff because he was against the flow. Grimes and to Goey, that matchup.
from what about halfway through the third quarter, I guess. And it and it worked for Richmond because Rance started getting involved up the ground and freed him up a little bit. So then Curvis, Pendlebury, Phillips. You run over. Grundy running hard with short. What a season he's having, Grundy. Grundy and Toby. Didn't realise that 85 was the magic number, so 12 and zip, Collingwood at 85 points this year. 16 and zip, Richmond at the same number. And the Pies have got there first, and the Tigers are most unlikely to get there. See if they set this up again for Mason Cox. Give him the channel to run and jump in. Yeah, but it was a hole, mate. So Adams over 30, side bottom over 30. Adams sets it up. Cox, Cox, Cox. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Conker. Phillips. And is it out? Not quite. And it's a boundary throw in, I think. You know, it's, it's great to see teams kicking the air to a player. We yeah. haven't seen that all for a long time, have we? Collingwood would have done it either to Dugowie to tonight or Cox. They've been their two main targets. Yeah. And they've never put it right on his head in a position where he can jump at it, even if it's going high, so he can run, jump and launch. Still right in the balance here at the moment. Grundy can get it out of the balance. 33 points. That could be it. Side bottom and Adams, how good have they been together tonight? Down that line, Thomas inside to Varco. Back to Thomas, running hard was Talor. Kicks to fall forward, Cox in the front spot. Who's in the back? Rance. Rance. Against Oscar Nitti. So Rance out the back door to Cotchen. Cotchen short ball, punched away by Crisp. McIntosh under immediate black and white pressure. Look at this, ground level ball, Rant skirting, Caddy, little fumble, trying to recover, handball towards the boundary line, under enormous pressure here, the Tigers, it's all or nothing, it's all or nothing, the black and white fans, look at them getting up, they're urging their team, they know they're almost there, they're within two or three minutes of sealing this game. And with it being all or nothing for Richmond, now's a chance for Collingwood, to completely put the foot down a pile on a couple of goals. Richmond will take all sorts of risks. Greg Cotchen's had a big second half. He's been a little sloppy with the kick, but he's been under great pressure. Rioli tried to steal it. Grundy again to side bottom, to Trelaw, to Crisp. What a first half Crisp played. That one cut off by Graham. Prestia, I should say. Yeah, Prestia. So Prestia at half back. Thanks, Lingy. Down the line, cut off by Langdon. It's been fascinating on two points to see how well Collingwood have played and to see Richmond in this state. Just how well Collingwood have set up against a system that has been so strong and almost unbeatable. They've controlled the footy out of their back half and now just slowing it down and trying to control the footy now. They know. Steel side bottom. This will be disposal number 36 for him. What a game he's played. And Wayne did ponder the question today that he was in the absolute elite. Well, we probably weren't used to it. We are now, aren't we? We know that he is. Oh, I cannot believe it. Oh, now he's lining up for the 60-meter goal. In 1956, 
a collegiate American Bobby Morrow won three gold medals, the 100, the 2 and the 4 by 1. I'm not sure he was here any better than this bloke tonight. 11 marks in a prelim. He's called him to play on there, Bruce. He was wasting time. To go, he launches. He told him he had to go. He looked up at the scoreboard, I reckon. Collingwood appealing for the deliberate here, and I think they've got it. Maynard. It's all just unravelling at the moment. The favourites look like they're going to be bundled out. Finished on top of the ladder. They have basically been the best team in the competition all year. Cochin wide to Martin. Martin launches off half-back. Maynard Corrells did well. Slid the handball, not kicking tonight, Dusty. Handballing a lot more than he's kicking. Graham's run down. Adams, who Bruce said had been superb. Their tackling has been superb. They have stuck every one of them. This has been unbelievably impressive from Collingwood. Grundy, great mark. It's hard to believe that... Uh, Adams and Sidebottom aren't the best two players on the ground, but Cox has taken more contested marks tonight than any other player this season. Eight contested marks. That is phenomenal. All over the ground. Well, it was going to take something special to beat him, Bruce, and it has. It has. It has taken a remarkable midfield performance, a great Ruckman, and a colossus up forward, and a match winner in Degoe to go with it. And again, tackling like that. All the way from the simplest part of the game to the biggest highlights of the game, they have executed every moment perfectly. And it doesn't matter what happens in Perth tomorrow, Collingwood are going to start favourite in the grand final next Saturday. Greenwood hasn't quite got the length. A big fly in the front there by Hoskin Elliott, Hooley, Varco, Thomas across the face. He's taken the mark side bottom, has he? No, hit the ground. <laughs> Duck, you looked at me quizzically. I reckon they're favourite, whatever happens tomorrow. Even if Melbourne or West Coast win as convincing as this, Bruce? Beating Richmond. They're not beating the Tigers gets, at yeah. the MCG. Oh, whatever it's going to happen, it's going to be good. It's going to be magnificent, Bruce. <laughs> Little one there from Higgins. What about the contested marking? Let's see if Greenwood can create another opportunity here. Gee, the big guys, when you think of them in finals, Duck, Hawkins and Boyd and Mason Cox today. Contested marking for the big fellas is so important. So uh, intercept marking in your back line and... They started it. That, that, their back line started it early in the game, winning it back, gave them the chance to run off it, and just to been a complete performance all over the ground, this. Richo and Daisy, without notice, Jeremy Howe, I, it, what's his situation? Is he, is he going to be OK for next week, do you reckon? Well, the fact that he's still out there, Bruce, has to be a positive thing for Collingwood and Jeremy Howe. I don't think at this point they'd be risking him. Buckley came out of the race at three-quarter time chatting to the doctor. I dare say it was about his condition and how much of a risk it would be to put him back out there. So they must be pretty confident. But all the, all the teams that have beaten Richmond this year have controlled the air. And Colling would have done exactly that. High ball again. Speaking of the air, Higgins had the ball pinned and Colling would have got to go into their first grand final since 2011. It's coming out, boys. Oh, there you go. We know it's over now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Nathan Buckley in his seventh year as the Magpie coach. Taylor Adams. And I'm with you, Bruce. I reckon they go in as favourites, whoever they play. They have been extraordinary. Hoskin Elliott. Linking handball. Side bottom. Deliberately wide to Stevenson, who hasn't kicked one today. What is it about finishing 13th the year before? Exactly. <laughs> hey. Tigers did it. They have done it. Yeah, they haven't done it yet. They've got to the grand final. But it shows clubs willing to stay the course with the coach too. Not just go 
Little sack the coach option. No, put some support around them. Encourage them. To what think a about new ideas. Brave decision it was. The Peter Murphy led review. Buckley retained his job. And incredible what can happen. Incredible. Collingwood are going to the big dance. So that young fella, rising star 25 years after his coach was a rising star. And the last teenager to kick more goals than him in his first year was Chris Grant in 1990. It's been a phenomenal season. Telstra tracker for that man there. Look at him. The distance he has covered, the most on the ground, and he's done it with such efficiency too. 38 disposals. He has been crucial. What a player. His ball use is outstanding. His work rate is unbelievable. He is a champion. So out of the centre they go again, and Grundy belting the ball back. Cox having his arm held onto, bouncing away, bouncing away, sort of paddles it a bit. And then Cocker is tackled by Rance to Prestia, to Cochin, out wide, to Short. One of the three that didn't play in the Premiership last year out there. Oh, he had it stripped by Goldsack. Goldsack, can he believe it? ACL in March, he's going to play in a grand final again. He kicked the first goal in the winning grand final against St Kilda. Didn't play in the draw. Came into the grand final, got the opener. And what about this? What are the great, great runs in footies come to an end? 22 consecutive wins. And you do wonder, do you give Richmond a tick or a, not a tick for the season right here and now? <laughs> Seems ridiculous to ask. They've been so good for so long, haven't they? Yeah, it's, oh, look, they'll be terribly Thank disappointed. You, the Inquisitions will be strong, won't yeah. they? About what's happened in the last four or five yeah. weeks. I think a lot of talk about the the bye at the end of the year, then winning, going straight through to the prelim. Yeah. And those narrow victories late in the year? Yeah. What was it, one game in a month, something like that? Having said that, they did it last year and they won. Four minutes. I think for one of the first times in a long time, too, the lack of another tall in the forward line did show out in this game tonight. And probably the, arm. Well, that, and the they ruck as well. Boston. They weren't able to get anything out of Josh Caddy, Richo, and you're right, been able to chop out Nan Curvis in the ruck. <laughs> Cost them tonight. But everything Collingwood have done tonight has just been so impressive. From their pressure, from their ball use, from their contested marking, their finishing in the moment you spoke about it, Duckman, there's no pressure on them. Just being able to hit that kick or kick that goal, they've done it. Pendle break, so knocked out. 18 home and away wins for this Richmond team, Bruce. They were favourites for this game, make no mistake. And Collingwood have come in with a mindset that has been able to get something incredibly good accomplished. And there's an example of what's happened tonight. Just think back to the first quarter of this game where that pressure from Collingwood equaled and probably, well, it definitely bettered the Tigers in that first quarter. It was enormous. Meyer check. It's not just the just pressure, but the, the ability to make sure those tackles, players haven't been able to even break a tackle tonight. So Meyer check's kicked down the line, asked a lot of Cox, but a lot has been asked of him all night. Paddle back from Greg to Short. Pendlebury makes the contest. Prestia works it well for himself and then bundles the ball forward, Langdon there and takes the mark. We started the night talking about the history of BT between these two clubs. 81 years since Collingwood has beaten Richmond in a final. That was the day Dawn Fraser was born. Gordon Coventry kicked six in the match and Jack Dye was playing his hundredth. it has been 81 years since the black and white have beaten the Tigers in a finals match. Oh, amazing. Trelaw, Boskin Elliott. Phillips, the overlap, impressive. Majacek needs to get rid of it, did. Hoskin Elliott 
Smothered Edwards. Hooley now. Collingwood players in their minds at the moment. 39 up with just a couple of minutes remaining. Would be thinking a little bit about preservation. They would be delighted with what they've been able to achieve. Enormous confidence will be drawn out of this today. Side bottom to Pendlebury. The skipper. The opportunity to lead his side next week. And Majacek. Don't think, unless there's injury concerns out of this game, that Collingwood are going to make any changes. They'll go with the same again, you think, Lincoln? I think so, BT. They've been so good. Jeremy Howe will be watched all week with that ankle, but I'm certain he'll be right to go. Playing in a grand final. Nathan Buckley's happy. Hugs to all his coaches. And, Liggy, a lot of the story during the week, it will be about Bucks. That premiership eluded him as a player. He won a Norm Smith medal in the grand final and didn't really want it, did he? Because they didn't win. But he won't want that front and centre this week, but he's going to get a lot of it, isn't he? Yep. We all love Bucks, don't we? Absolutely. Short at centre wing. Out wide. And this guy, a hey, duck. It was a good article, and the timing was perfect. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been a superstar for a long time. Not and even though all Australian this year, first best and fairest last year, up against, he's just sat in the shadow of the great Pendlebury and maybe Dane Swan before that. But he sits right alongside those guys now. Well, I didn't think we'd be saying at the start of the season that Collingwood would be the first team in to the 2018 Grand Final. But that's what we're about to say. They did beat the GWS Giants last Saturday night and tonight they have taken down the giant of the competition the unbeatable team here at the MCG the team that nobody's been able to get over for 66 weeks here round 13 last year they won the grand final by eight goals on this ground and tonight they've met their match oh, it's been amazing Bruce Absolutely amazing. The crowd enormous again. And Collingwood will go in to the 2018 Grand Final. A famous victory on the back of this man here. tuned inside out and upside down within their walls. And uh, Daisy, have you got a step ladder? <laughs> no, the gentleman's just offered to get down on, on one knee. But uh, base, what is it about these big games? You seem to save your best for the biggest crowd, the biggest stage. Uh, it is.
appreciate my family's in town, so maybe I got to thank them. I'm not really sure, but I think I just got a bit of a different mindset. Most of the boys aren't stressed out too much about it, just kind of focus on the little things. So, uh, no, it's not really proud to me. I mean, Jordan kicked four today. The, the backs hold out, man. To hold the Richmond to 58 points, and that's pretty good. So, I think it was just a great team effort to come here. Was the plan always to lay it up to you like the boys did all night, or was that just identifying that you were on and, and just playing that way? Yeah, I think after the first one, they just kind of started looking for you. You know, you get a few marks, and um, you start looking as a target. They start kind of looking for you every time they get the ball inside 50. So, no, it's a good day, and um, hopefully we can go on for next week and do well again. You mentioned your mum and dad up there. They've been on Media Street today. How well do they know the game? Or would they have just enjoyed the atmosphere and the chant of USA going around the stadium? Yeah, I'll... We're probably still trying to get the head wrapped around it. My dad, my mom and dad watch every day, you know, every game. They start until 4 a.m. and just they've been supportive of me and my athletic career so throughout my whole life. So uh, not only that, my brothers too. So I've just got a really supportive family. I'm just really grateful for it. Well, thanks, Mace. Well done. Very impressive. Over to you, Richard. Thanks, Daisy. Still, just before we get on to the rest of the game, what a phenomenal display of marking. Uh, makes it pretty good when you've got someone like that in your forward line. Yeah, it does. And I, you know, I think previous weeks he's had his hand storm, but tonight they just stuck and um, geez, it was impressive to, to sit back and watch but to see him hit the scoreboard he takes a lot of pride in his performance and I think he's been down a little bit over the last few weeks but to see him come out and perform on such a big stage that's why we got him from the US You see everything behind the scenes to come and do what he has done tonight he must do a lot of work, he's leading patterns, that takes a lot of learning when you don't come from the game. Yeah exactly I think three years or whatever he's, he's known the game so um, it's a credit to himself, but people around him and the coaches and all that to, I suppose, teach him the game. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of him. Yeah. Still, at what stage this year did you start to get a belief that there was something building at this club? Because the outside looking in, there's real momentum, and you can see it building week by week. When did you start thinking it could? Um, I can't really put a finger on it, but I believe over you know the last sort of few years has put us in this position. We've had some. You know, times that have been tough, but um, it's made blokes stronger. And, you know, you want to win games of footy all the time. But, um, you know, the journey that we're on, not only just for this year, but for more years to come, um, yeah, blokes put in a lot of effort and it's good to see some reward. Before we go to Daisy with your coach, he changed a few things around as well when he came back pre-season? Um, yeah, a little bit. Probably got a little bit more time inside the, inside the middle. But, um, I don't know, maybe I'm at the right age to start playing some better footy. Well done, Steele. Thank Over you. to you, Daisy. I won't, I won't keep you long, Bucks, because I know it's a special moment, but what was it tonight when you reflect back on the plan? What did they absolutely nail that meant that you could break the Tigers? Oh, look, we, we just played really solid footy. I mean, earlier it was more than solid. It was dynamic. We were able to score, and when there was that gap in the scoreboard, I, I think we, we got careful, which is fair enough. And Richmond really got going sort of early in that last quarter, but I thought we showed maturity to be able to handle that gap and then to come again late in the last quarter. And so many special stories, but none more so than Mason Cox. You guys have stuck by him throughout his whole career, but particularly over the last couple of weeks when the criticisms come. How impressive was he tonight? Oh, he's huge. Probably one of his better games um, in his career, so um, definitely his most consistent four-quarter effort. So... We, um, we've got a lot of belief in all of our players, and I think that's pretty clear. I mean, you get to this stage, you um, you want to see them show their strengths, and Mason definitely did that tonight. So what's next? How do you manage this moment but get them ready for the next one? Well, we, we, we've enjoyed every moment of the season, and we'll, we'll enjoy this. Um, and we've got a bit of work to do. We've got a bit of time, and we'll have a look at tomorrow night. Um, and our intent was, you know, after we lost the against West Coast, so we've got three games to win. So we've got two of those. We've got another game to win. Good, well done, Bucks. Good luck next Thanks, week. Guys. Back to you, Richo. Now, Tyson, even in your wildest dreams, you wouldn't believe what's just happened to you, mate. You're in a grand final after doing your knee in March. Can you believe this? Uh, no, I can't. I can't. I, yeah, I mean, I, I dreamt of coming back to play this year when I did my knee, but to be here, to be standing right here after after winning the prelim and heading to a grand final, it's, oh, that's surreal. It, it hasn't sunk in. It won't sunk in, sink in for a couple of days, but... Well, we, I mean, what, what it feels like now is pretty good, so I'll yeah. take that. Imagine, mate. You said it was a dream. When did it actually become realistic this year that you could get out of here and play? Phenomenal job you've done the last three weeks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it, probably mid, midway through the year. Um, I think we played Queen's birthday. I was just heading off to, 
to Europe for a three-week holiday and um, just before I left, we said, yeah, we'll, we'll have a fair crack at it. So um, I'd had my sights pre sediment for a while, um, set pretty firmly and a couple of hiccups, but I mean, we're here now and we're going to for the world. So it's, I you know, can't wait. Let's just get this week started and get the next week. Just quickly, mate, the rest of the back line tonight, you guys set it up early. You were able to clear the space and let Sidebottom and Phillips go to work on transition. You've got something special brewing down there. Yeah, we do. Uh, and they've been doing it all year. And I've said it for the last couple of weeks. I'm just riding on their coattails of the hard work they've done this year. They've been phenomenal. Like, and I've, I've sat in the stands and watched the way they've gone about it and week in, week out. And the fact that I can come out and, and play a small part, um, yeah, I'm so grateful. And you know, I, just, I just want to get around them and enjoy this. Mate, well done. Great effort, and you're in a grand final. <laughs> Thanks, Richo. Tyson. Cheers, mate. Again, Richo. Again. And he did kick the first goal of that replay. So look at this. Look at Nathan here. I mean, he's been through a lot. We know that. But this is the sweetest of the lot. Look at this. Have a look at his son and his father. So two flags, two cups in 60 years. Can you believe it? 1990 and 2010, after 1958, they'd won their 13th. It's been a long time coming. Just two in the last 60. But next Saturday afternoon, they might get their hands around it again. That's what we're talking about. That's what they want to get those fingers and hands all over. And they've given themselves the most unlikely chance we didn't pick it no one really saw it coming and boy boy is melbourne going to be fun this city this whole week whatever happens in perth tomorrow varco with his two premierships with lingy at geelong eh? pendles waits he's been a norm smith medalist pendles one of three with buckley and there's the story of the night Buckley and Shaw, there's the story of the night. A giant in more ways than one now. Beautiful scenes. There we go, there we go. Dip, 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 d